Hello and welcome back to Talking Planning. And today you join me at Bribery Island where it's bloody windy, bloody cold, and quite sandy. But at least I've got coffee. And behind me, a view of somewhere over there, Morton Island, and that ship, which is probably coming into dock in Brisbane. But I thought I'd come over and check out Bribey while I had the chance and maybe dispel a few myths about the area and show you some of the cool stuff that people often ignore when they sometimes perhaps pass Bribey Island off as a retirement village rather than an actual place to come and visit. But overall, glad to be here, though I wish the weather was a little bit nicer. So why should you come to Bribey Island? So first of all, it's got this bubbler. <laughs> it also splashes you in the face because the water pressure is insane. This park, and over there, it's also got this beach, which is actually rather nice and you probably should come and check out. And is probably the main reason to come to Wirrim. A day with weather better than today, chances are you might like to use these barbecues to have a nice seaside barbecue. However, today, I think not. As you can see by the atrocious state of my hair and the wind and the fact that I'm wearing a windproof jacket and I'm still cold. But there is also a beach hut for overlooking the surf where the lifeguard will stay. There's one consolation though, the view is pretty nice and there are a few more interesting initiatives here than I first thought there'd ever be at Bribey Island. Like this chessboard at the bench overlooking the view. Could be worse, so little initiatives like this are things that I like. Just remember to bring your own chess pieces. I just saw this sign and I think this is an absolutely incredible initiative, that's brilliant. That's awesome, fantastic work. This sign highlights more promiscuous bathing habits than I was expecting for Bribey Island. One thing you might be surprised to find out about Bribey is there are actually a fair few apartments along the waterfront. And I tell you what, I wouldn't say no to waking up with that view if I had the money to buy this sort of thing. It's not a bad view. And I suppose I'll just give you a perspective as I walk down this cul-de-sac, particularly for on the lower floors, Although up, if you look over the cul-de-sac, you're gonna see this. And I don't know about you, but if this is what I woke up to in the morning, I'd be pretty darn happy with myself. Whilst you're on Bribey Island, make sure you go and get yourself some local food. And I've done the same too, because in this bag, I've got something beautiful, a... That didn't work properly, but it's a Nenish tart and like an idiot i forgot to stop to try and show you so we're going to cut to that footage now is this ninish chart any good this is the moment of truth mm. Mm. it is good that's blowing away in the brick so good mark there Whilst on Bribey Island, you'll also find this war memorial next to the Bribey Island Surf Club, which also offers a nice bit of area to sit down and wait for your bus. And yes, crazy as I sound, I did indeed come to Bribey Island today by bus. The car's still at home in the garage. I came over on the 640 to Bribey Island from Caboolture. And you can do the same as well if you are prepared to wait for an hourly bus. That takes about an hour to get here and do the same on the way back. But it is definitely possible. I did it. And coming up now, you'll see what the bus looks like that got me there. I'll just point out quickly that before I go much further, that I've only shown you around a small part of Bribe Island called Wurrim, which is close to where this 640 bus is, which is what I just caught to get here. Um, 
There's a lot more of Bribey Island which you should come and see if you are going to visit, but if you are doing what I did and coming by public transport, this is probably the easiest spot to get to and the easiest spot to spend an hour or two and still have a good time as well. And now it's time for a quick park review. And there's more barbecues here. Across the side from the park, which is empty. But this little spot's quite tranquil. I like it. More park benches, nice outlooks. I quite like the tree covering as well. Fairly unusual lamp design as well. <laughs> Let's get a look at that closer. There's the lamp in a little bit better lighting. A little culvert, a little stream, which probably isn't moving all that much. But there's certainly some good maintenance going on because the grass is growing back quite nicely. There's some decent mulch around the trees and it's actually quite created, sorry. It's created a really nice little spot that's actually quite good. Oh, and the magpies are flying away now too. So I might leave it here because I don't really want to get ambushed by them. I'm about to head back to Caboolture, but I just thought I'd quickly show there's some signs advertising a new survey for the improvement of transport in the region. There comes my bus, so let's quickly summarise what I thought of Bribey Island. So my question that I'm aiming to answer today is, so in all of this, do you think we should continue to sometimes make perhaps a little bit of unkind remarks around Bribey Island due to its demographic composition? And I don't think we should. You know, there's actually a lot of nice little things around. It is a bit quiet, it's a bit quaint, and it's probably not the best destination for seeking an adrenaline rush, but overall, it's actually quite a nice, quiet and relatively tranquil place to visit, especially if you like a little bit of beach and you just want somewhere to relax and spend some time without having to worry about too much. Unfortunately, that kind of does describe the demographic who've chosen to call Bribey Island home, but let's put that aside anyway. Thanks for joining me on Talking Planning and see you again soon.